Hey there, everyone. Dr. Beth Westy here. And I wanted to talk about alcohol and hormones today. <sighs> you ever have one of those days where you're like, oh, sweet, sweetheart, you just are waiting for me, aren't you? Mm. <laughs> school started, kids are back in school. And um, yeah, here comes the uh, homework things. All the homework things, all of the stuff. And sometimes it's just, it's nice, right? It's nice. So I get this question a lot from people when they're asking about overall making health changes, like how much is too much or what can I have or how often, or is this really bad? Is this what's really ruining things? Is it the calories? Is it the calories in here that's that's ruining things for me? How is this impacting my hormones? So we're going to dive into this. Um, things that I want to bring up as resources, I'm going to put a link right here if you um, are not on the waitlist for my one-to-one -one, um, level program. You can find that in the comments there where we work together. And I can guide you on all of these things um, that you'd be needing help with. If you're looking at uh, eating for your cycle, that is my book, The Female Fat Solution. This is on Amazon. Female Menopause Solution, if you don't have a cycle anymore. And then my YouTube channel is called Dr. Beth Westy. You can subscribe to stay updated on all the things I have there, as well as my podcast, The Female Health Solution, where I do a lot more info there and dive into some different topics as well. So alcohol and hormones, what's the deal? Is it really bad? Is it that bad? Because sometimes I feel like having a glass or two is actually better for my body than not. So where do we draw the line, right? Where do we where do we draw the line here, right? I don't, um, it's funny, I actually have a, I don't, I don't drink very much. Um, but I do, whatever I do, this is, there's a, I get it delivered. It's a, I get it delivered. <laughs> of course. Um, it's a organic and biodynamic wine. So if you are going to consume some type of alcohol, making sure that it is like the healthiest version possible is really helpful for your system, especially with things like wines there. This is a side note, but there's besides like tannins, other things like that. If it's not organic, there can be a lot of other um, garbage in it. In fact, um, I have a friend who she's like in the wine business and she was telling me that if it's not organic or biodynamic, then when they're like harvesting the grapes. The machines just come along and like scoop up everything. And if there's like frogs or snakes or something in there, it goes in there. It goes in with the grapes, which gets mashed up and ends up. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. No. Yeah. I'm not into that. <laughs> so if I am going to imbibe, you know, I uh, enjoy a glass um, or two, should it be the occasion. It would be something very specific, right? So there is that. Um, and I'll talk about timeline for things after I get through this, but just, just to kind of keep that in mind, quality, quality matters. Now, when you're consuming alcohol, it does have physiological effects in your system. It's going to increase your stomach acid. It's gonna change how your digestive system functions. So if you have gut issues already, and you're drinking a glass of wine every day, is that terrible overall? No. But is it good for your digestive system? No. Just a glass of wine can increase stomach acid. So if you already have gut issues, taking a break, avoiding repairing your gut would be really helpful. This is why, again, in the comments, you can get on the list for that. In the one-to-one -one level, I do uh, GI mapping to make sure we know what your gut is doing. But again, that's one of those things that you can be like, oh, I, I wasn't even thinking they were related. Yeah, totally related. Because drinking alcohol, again, that's not that much a day. It's not that much. But one glass a day can increase your stomach acid, which is, I mean, that's why maybe why you're feeling bloated and all that stuff. Um, it also increases your cortisol levels. If you're already under stress and you're thinking, I just need a glass of wine to relax, to unwind. Sure, it can make you feel more relaxed, but it does increase your cortisol levels kind of working against you there, right? Yeah. It also decreases human growth hormone. What? Yeah, so now I'm really getting into the hormone levels. So if you're thinking about stomach acid, how does that impact um, hormone levels? That's about detoxification pathways, everything else besides gut health, cortisol levels, cortisol is their stress hormone. So that's a hormone. 
human growth hormone, very, very important. This is highly connected with your metabolism and it actually helps you build and re repair lean muscle. And this is most, most active at night. Yeah. So if you are a person who's like, I'm going to have wine before I go to bed and that's what helps me wind down and sleep. Cool, cool. But you're decreasing your human growth hormone by up to 70%. Yeah. So if you're working out and everything during the day, trying to get fit and lean and all that stuff, but you're having wine every day, you're working against yourself. Now, does that mean you can't ever have this? No. Again, we'll talk about timing in just a minute, but I want to um, address all these things because it's sometimes not fun to hear this information. And you might be like, oh, that's stupid or that's terrible. I don't want to hear that. I'm sorry. That's the way it is. <laughs> and it just depends on what you want more. Do you want to have that glass of wine every day more than the time and effort that you're taking to work out and build lean muscle. Yeah, it's up to you. I mean, it's, you're doing it, so not me. So, you know. Um, so that's important to recognize and realize. And then the last piece here, of course, which kind of seems like common sense, right? Uh, it decreases your overall liver fil filtering ability. Your liver is in charge of filtering a majority of all your hormones. So when you clog it up with other stuff, and this is the same thing for other endocrine disruptors. Um, I talk about, you know, chemicals, processes, makeups, all those other things, other toxins that are you're around you that are messing up your hormones. Your body's already dealing with all of that. Now you're going to add something else to gunk up the system and have it deal with that. Okay. You know, but there's so many women that they'll have a glass of wine and immediately get hot flashes or their night sweats will get crazy bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that absolutely is a thing. It can make your PMS worse. Yeah, you can have really bad mood swings, um, bad cycle issues, heavy periods, clots, irregular cycles. It can throw off your ovulation. And if you're thinking, well, I I'm not drinking that much or it's not whatever, even a little, again, a little bit every day can have this overall effect. So when you're looking at really taking care of your health, right, if you are having, so this is where I'm going to talk about the timeline of it. If you are having even one glass of wine a day, that can cause these effects if you're doing that every day for a year, right? Because it doesn't seem like that much. Oh, it's just a glass a day. Okay, that's true. It's just a glass a day. But over the course of a year, that's a lot. That's a lot. And that's a lot for your system to deal with, you know, versus I have a glass or two a week. That's fine, right? That's fine. I don't have an issue with that at all. A glass or two a week is not going to have a big negative impact on your system. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Again, if your body can handle it that well. However, again, if you are trying to work on your hormones, if you are trying to achieve a different level of health, right, and you're stuck and you're frustrated and all these things and people think it's the calories, that's why. No, it is all this stuff. So sometimes taking a break for a month while you really focus on your liver, while you really focus on your cortisol levels, improving those, then after a month, sure, have a glass a week or two, right? Um, after uh, a month, you know, I wouldn't say just jump right back into having a glass every day, but you can then enjoy it. If you're looking at tapering things down, if you're like, yeah, I, I have a glass of wine every day. Yeah. That's been a rough year and a half for me. So I'm, that's how I've been getting through. All right. No judgment, you know, but if you're like, I'm at a point where I want to turn things around, I want to move forward. I want to work on these things. I want to get my health better. And I've been struggling. Okay. Maybe I have been thinking I should cut this out. Yeah. Here we go. I'm going to cut this out. How long should I cut it out for? How long should I really severely decrease or eliminate alcohol to make a positive impact on my hormones. 12 weeks. 12 weeks. Why? Why? Why does it have to be that long? That's a hormone cycle. Again, these are things I talk about in my book. These are things that I teach you um, when we work together. But that's a hormone cycle. Does that mean that if you only do it for a week or a month that that's not good? Eh, no. But again, it depends on how bad your hormones are. This is why I do hormone testing. This is why I do hormone testing for you to see what your levels are so that we can talk about really what are realistic expectations for your body, for what you're able to fit in with your lifestyle. For some people, like they, they absolutely cannot, um, you know, like their lifestyle is just, they're like, 
I go out a lot or I have these business meetings and we have drinks and da da da. So I can cut down, but I, I, I could see that being just really hard for me to not drink for three months. Okay. Okay. That's fair. All right. Then we'll work with it and we'll do as best we can, you know, but decreasing gives you the best result. Eliminating for at least 30 days also has a really positive impact. So um, other questions I get are, does it matter if it's white wine versus red wine versus hard liquor, you know, or beers, uh, hard ciders, or, you know, duh, oh, you know, the calories in this one versus the calories in that one. And the duh, I don't care about calories, right? I don't care about calories. <laughs> I'm yelling now. I don't want to put the calories. Ugh. I'm going to start sweating. I get so worked up here. It is about what it does to your system. So if you, again, if you love wine and that's your thing, cool, great. If you like, I don't know, again, I don't drink that much. I am not that cool, really. I, <laughs> whenever I've gone out to a bar or out to dinner with people and they order drinks, I'll just be like, oh, what they ordered sound good. sounds good. So I'll be like, yeah, I love that. I love that. Because I don't know. <laughs> They're like, oh, you like those too? I, I sure do. And I'm thinking in my head, I'll see when it shows up at the table. <laughs> But if you like, you know, um, like a gin and tonic or something, and you're thinking, yeah, this is, this is better because it's less calories than a beer. Yeah. No, it's still gin. <laughs> it's going to have that impact, right? So again, sometimes people will cut out alcohol for, for certain periods of time, you know, for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days for a lot of different reasons. And that's great. But again, if you are stuck with your health goals, if you are feeling like you cannot move forward with something, if you are feeling like um, something isn't working for you and you're having issues with your hormones, you're having issues with your fitness goals, your stress levels, your gut, I would consider taking a break and working on these things while you're taking a break from alcohol because it'll be worth it. Then it's like, you just clear that stuff out so that all the work that you're doing shows up more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what I got for you guys today. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions on this or if you want me to do a deep dive on anything that I've mentioned here. Um, but I, I do get this question from just about everybody. Oh, also, last thing I'll mention before <laughs> uh, is that a lot of times people are like, well... Estrogen or progesterone, really? Like, what is this? Well, this is fermented and everything. So it would go in progesterone phase after you ovulate. And if you're in menopause, anytime. <laughs> if you want the breakdown there. Uh, so, all right. Let me know if you guys have questions. You can always put questions down below. Um, I'll either respond to your questions. If you're not comfortable commenting, you can always send me a private message. I get messages from women literally all over the world every single day. And then um, I can either do a video on it or provide you with more information or resources um, just to make sure that you guys are getting the information that you need to make a positive health choice. So that's what I got for you guys tonight. Have a great night and I will see you later.